So in this class, we will discuss about Mendelian genetics. So let us discuss about Mendelian genetics. So uh, this Mendelian, this uh, Gregor John Mendel, everybody has heard about him. He was a Austrian monk, born in 1822 in Czech Republic, and he worked as he worked at a monastery and taught in a high school. And meantime, he also tended the monastery garden. And in that uh, garden, he grew peas and become interested in the traits that were expressed in different generations of peas. So, his work entitled Experiments on Plant Hybrids was published in 1866. Like many great uh, scientific discoveries, it was also ignored for 34 years. But in 1900, Mandel's work was rediscovered by three botanists working independently. They were Hugo Deveries of Holland, Karl Cordens of Germany, and Eric von Schermack of Austria. So before going to Mendelian principles, some important terms are there. Everybody should know about them for better understanding of Mendelian inheritance. So Mendelian factors are now called as genes. Alleles, what are those? Alleles are different version of same gene. Means these are the alternative forms of same gene. An individual with two identical alleles is termed as homozygous. Means that individual will have the identical alleles of a gene. An individual with two different alleles is termed as heterozygous. Genotype, what it is? Genotype is a genetic makeup of an organism, a description of the gene it contains. Then phenotype, it refers to the outward appearance of an individual. That is, external appearance of any individual is that we call it phenotype. So, dominant, what it is? Dominant means when alternate form of a factor, that is alleles, are combined. One form masks the expression of other member of a pair. Then what is recessive? The allele that is not expressed when two alternative alleles are present together, but seen when present in homozygous condition. Okay, we will discuss it in uh, detail. What is, what is monohybrid crosses? When a single pair of alleles are involved, when we take a single pair of allele at a time, that cross will be called as monohybrid cross. Then dihybrid cross when two pair of alleles are involved. So what is codominance? When both alleles contribute to the phenotype of an organism. Multiple alleles. When more than two possible alleles exist in a population for a trait, Back cross, mating of F1 individual or progeny to any of its parents, any of either parents if you will mate that progeny, that it will be called, called as back cross. But when the F1 progeny is mated to recessive parent, then it will be called as test cross. So Mandel worked on these seven traits, as we all know, these are stem length, pod shape, seed shape, seed color, flow position, flow color, and pod color. The, then we will move on to first principle of Mendel. What it is? It is the principle of segregation. It, it states that during gamete formation, the alleles for each gene 
सेग्रीगेट फ्रॉम ईच अदर सो दैट ईच गैमीट कैरीज ओनली वन अलील फॉर ए जीन ओके सो वॉट इट इज टू अलील्स ऑफ द सेम जीन सेग्रीगेट इक्वली मीन्स टू अलील्स फॉर ए जीन सेग्रीगेट्स मीन सेपरेट्स ड्यूरिंग गैमीट फॉर्मेशन वेन टू अलील सेग्रीगेट फ्रॉम ईच अदर इन टू गैमीट्स ए हाफ ऑफ गैमीट carries one allele and a half of gamete carries another allele so now we will see what is mono hybrid cross parents differ by single trait means a single trait will be taken at a time crossing two pea plants that differ in stem size one tall and one short so capital t is the allele for tallness Okay, then small t is allele for dwarf dwarfness. So when this capital T is in homozygous condition, then that plant will be homozygous tall plant, and when small t will be in homozygous condition, that plant will be homozygous dwarf plant. So when we will cross these plants that is when we cross capital t capital t genotype with small t small t genotype then in f1 generation we will have all plants which are tall by phenotypic appearance means phenotypically they will be tall but their genotype will be capital t small t those those will be heterozygotes when we allow these f1 plants to self fertilize the next uh, mono hybrid cross would be capital t small t crossing capital t small t it means a tall heterozygous plant will be crossing a tall heterozygous plant so in f2 generation we will have capital t small t as a male gametes and capital t small t as female gametes so by this checker board we can see here out of four three are tall and one is dwarf but when we see their genotype then we will have a ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 but phenotypically we had 3 is to 1 ratio then we will move on move on to mandel's second uh, principle that is independent assortment so principle of independent assortment what it states members of one gene pair segregate independently from each other during gamete formation different pairs of allele assort independently during gamete formation assortment of alleles of one gene is dependent of assortment of alleles of another gene when we take two or more traits at a time then this principle of independent assortment comes into picture genes get shuffled these many combinations are one of the advantage of sexual reproduction so for this when we cross a round green seed containing plant to a wrinkled yellow colored seed plant then we will have gametes capital r small y for one parent and small r and capital y for other parent and in f1 we will have a round yellow individual when we allow this f1 to for self pollination or self fertilization then in f2 we will have this much these much progenies so we can see here the round and yellow are 9 then round and green are 
yellow and wrinkled are three, and green and wrinkled are it's a one out of sixteen. So what it what it shows that round is dominant over wrinkled and yellow is dominant over green. Test cross. When you have an individual with an unknown genotype, we perform a test cross. So what is the need of a test cross? When we are having individual with unknown genotype, then to know their uh, genotypes, we go for a test cross. What is a test cross? Cross with the homozygous recessive individual. Means when we cross a progeny to their homozygous recessive parent, then this cross will be called as test cross. For example, a plant with purple flower can either be capital B, capital P, or capital P, small p. Therefore, you cross the plant with a small p, small p. That is white flower homozygous recessive. So, to know the genotype, we perform a test cross. So, if you get all 100% purple flower, then it shows that the unknown parent was capital P, capital P. And if you get 50% white and 50% purple flowers, then the unknown parent was capital P, small p. Because to have a white flower, individual should be a recessive homozygous. So here we can see for white flower, small p, small p should be the genotype of that individual. Test cross to verify equal frequency of gametes in the double heterozygous, that is in diabrid cross, if uh, any individual with unknown genotype we are having, then to know, the, know its genotype, we can go for a uh, test cross. So we can uh, have this uh, round yellow, capital R, small r, capital I, small y, cross with wrinkled green. So in F1, we got, what we got? Yellow and round. All, all individuals will yellow and round. But in F2 generation, when we allow this, back cross, this test cross, then we got a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So this is the characteristic of a test cross. We will have a genotypic and phenotypic ratio equal to 1 is to 1 in monohybrid and 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 in dihybrid cross. Number of loci at which both parents are heterozygous. So by knowing the number of uh, heterozygous loci, we can uh, calculate different, uh, different uh, frequencies or number of uh, different uh, uh, genotypes and phenotypes. So when, the, when we have an uh, loci, then we will have number of gametes equal to 2 raised to power n. When then number of phenotypes in that progeny will be 2 raised to power n. Then number of genotypes will be 3 raised to power n. Then number of individuals required to get one homozygous recessive progeny will be 4 raised to power n. So if we will have that individual at heterozygous at 2 loci, that will have number of gametes 2. When we will have one number of loci at which both parents are heterozygous. Then number of gametes we will have two, phenotypes two, number of genotypes in the progeny three, and then number of individuals required to get one homozygous recessive per progeny is four. So by using this formula, we can calculate these uh, frequencies.